We're learning to be tool safe. Watch this video to find out the safety guidelines for this procedure. The open source electronics movement has allowed everyone to participate in the next revolution, the maker revolution. It is all about do it yourself or DIY. It is now easy and cheap to build incredible devices like never before. The downside of the DIY movement is that while it's cool to use and reuse materials and electronics from a combination of sources, new and old, there are potential safety hazards that you have to be aware of. First, make sure your head is clear to operate and personal devices or peers will not distract you. Then the power. Digital electronics mostly uses low power, usually 3 volts to 5 volts and in the range of several milliamps. However, your power source may be converted household power that is 110 volts and in the range of 15 to 20 amps and that can potentially be very dangerous. It should be noted that depending on conditions, static electricity can be present that can be in the order of thousands of volts. To protect circuits from exploding, possibly causing injury, make sure that you take all precautions to prevent static buildup by touching metal surfaces using static discharge mats or wristbands or placing circuit boards on non-conducting surfaces. As your first project, we're going to construct a simple circuit based on the Arduino Uno. It's a microprocessor that is the basis for a wide variety of electronic projects. By the way, to avoid static discharge, only hold electronic boards by the edge, never by the top or bottom. With potential for small flying wire bits, sparks and sharp pieces, you need to wear eye protection, safety glasses, we are going to construct a simple LED flasher unit using a schematic diagram that you have created in previous lessons. You should have created your Arduino code and uploaded it to the Arduino via the USB cable. A clean environment is necessary to prevent accidents. So first of all, get your work area set up, tools ready, and components handy. If you are working in pairs, make sure you both are aware what each other is doing and make sure both you and the other person work safe. Keep all power well away and unattached while you are working on circuits to prevent electrical shocks, sparks, or melting components. Never work on a circuit while powered on or even wired to a power source. The Arduino module will be separate from the breadboard. It is good practice to mount the two together to keep them from coming apart while they are live. Be aware, the Arduino has solder points on the bottom. These should be kept clear from any base. Use standoffs to mount the Arduino on a wood platform or other non-conductive surface. Now we can lay out our components on the breadboard. Keep in mind that we want to avoid potential short circuits. Neat circuits are a lot easier to debug than a mess of wires and components. Take note of the orientation or bias of the LED. The short leg faces the negative direction. The long face is positive. Refer to your teacher or look it up. Note that the wires may be clipped, so you need to use that flat end of the housing, which signifies the negative side. Place it the wrong way and you may smoke the LED, rendering it useless. We need to use a small resistor, usually 330 to 600 ohms, to protect each LED from excessive power, which could also cause it to pop. Take care in bending and arranging wires. If component legs are too long, use wire cutters to shorten them, or spread them out to keep the wires down as low as possible to the board. The use of pre-made hookup wire is a good idea, if you have them. Reduce the number of wires needed by using the common rails along each side of the breadboard. Keep in mind which is positive side and which is negative. By standard practice, the red is usually positive. The blue is the negative rail. Keep those in mind to avoid problems later. Be consistent from project to project. Now we are going to connect our components with each other and to the Arduino board. Keep jumper wires nice and neat. Use pliers to bend wires into the socket holes. Avoid crossovers as much as possible. Once you've laid your circuit down, always practice the second look method. Trace your circuitry before powering up. This may be a simple circuit, but more complex ones are coming your way, and you will be amazed at how many times you missed a connection or short-circuited a component. There are no shortcuts to safe circuits. Before powering up, your teacher must inspect your circuit. Never power up without this second pair of eyes. Ensure your power supply is set to 5 to 12 volts. Use a voltmeter if you need to check. Now you can apply the power. Always stand back a bit. Never have your face or anyone else's for that matter over the breadboard when you supply power. If you have followed the rules and done everything as expected, you may have a successful circuit. Don't be disheartened if something isn't working. It's how you learn. If there is a problem, your role now becomes a detective and you must troubleshoot the problem. 
to troubleshoot, you first have to find whether your problem is software or hardware related. Rule number one is to shut off power, and if you are going to remove wires or components, remove the power source to prevent accidental startup and shock. After checking your code, check all wires for breaks. Replace LEDs if they didn't light. Check if you have all wires in the proper connected holes. When you have finished troubleshooting, the next phase is to re-energize the circuit. If you still have problems, test your circuit with a voltmeter. Be careful of the leads. Don't short circuit your wires or components. Once you have a successful circuit, you're done. Show your teacher who may instruct you to dismantle the circuit or do documentation. Always shut off power and remove power source first. Then remove and straighten component leads and wires. Store them where they belong. There is nothing more frustrating than having to search for components that aren't in their proper place. The same goes for any tool. If you keep care of your equipment and tools, keep a neat workspace, and treat electricity with respect, you can avoid the potential for accidents and injury. Remember, there are no shortcuts. Take your time and do it well. Let's do our tool safe review. Always plan and troubleshoot circuits carefully. No conductive parts. Remove the power before working on a circuit. Watch for sharps and pinch points when working with assembly tools. Keep wires neat and traceable. Power a circuit only on the okay from your teacher. Return tools and components to their proper places when done. And if you're not sure about anything for safety, ask your teacher for more direction. And don't forget to be tool safe.